Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take the results of editing particles and emitters and display them in your game. If you recall, in our last video, I showed you how to edit particles and emitters using the Particle Editor for Corona SDK by a Roaming Gamer. In fact, if we click on the emitter button here, and we scroll to the end, number 13, is the emitter and particle set that we worked on last time. If we look in this in full screen, we'll see this is pretty much what we're looking to get in our game, or we should pretty much have the same result. So let's go ahead and close that, minimize it. Now, the first time around, I'm going to show you how to do this longhand using the code from Brent Sorrentino's um, article over on Corona Labs. You're looking for the article called Tutorial Using Particle Designer in Corona. If we scroll down here a little ways, we'll see a section that's called Displaying the Particle System. The code that we want is this code for loading and this code for displaying. Now, if we look at this in an editor, I've already copied and pasted that code, and it comes out to about, I don't know, say 10 or 12 lines of actual code, and the rest of it is just comments and spaces. So let's go ahead and we look in the temporary directory as I showed you in the last tutorial and we'll have two particle or, or two files that is we'll have the emitter definition with an RG extension and we'll have a particle uh, image. So what you want to do is you want to grab these and for now we'll just paste them into the root directory and I've already set up a project which is where we, the code we were just looking at and I put these in the root directory of that folder or that project and let's go ahead and grab the name of our emitter. Let's just get the number for now. And let's go ahead and make sure that this in fact matches. So it was emitter and then a number. Uh, you'll notice one difference is that in their example, the extension is .json, JSON. And that is because Particle Designer exports these with a different extension than my tool. So make sure that this is RG, and then if we go ahead and let's get the folder that this is in, just grab it here, and then in the simulator we'll go ahead and open project, paste that in there, and open the main file, and as we expected, there is our emitter. Now it's a little bit bigger in this case, and I think that is because uh, in the tool, I made the window a little bit smaller than the full screen, or I scaled it a little bit. Um, anyways, the point is, is that with just a few lines of code and having used the tool, we have a perfectly valid emitter that is working just fine. However, if you purchased the tool recently, in fact, uh, this may be true for all time, the tool comes with another set of scripts called the PEX tools. And the purpose of the PEX tools, or PEX tool, is to make it possible for you in just a couple of lines of code to load either a Roaming Gamer particle emitter, a uh, particle designer particle emitter, which has a different file format, or, and I won't show it to you here, a Starling emitter. And this, the Starling format emitter is, uh, you can use a free online tool for editing these and it comes out in yet another format. Actually, it comes out in XML encoded um, table format. So with the PEX tools, you can load any of these three formats using pretty much the same code. The only difference will be the name of the loader. In this case, we're using the load RG, which is for loading the Roaming Gamer emitters. And so, as you can see here, I've commented out the old code. I'm going to make sure that I'm using the same emitter. And on my first line of code, I load the PEX tools, which is simply uh, require PEX. And if you recall, let's see here. Of course, I'm not going to show you the right thing when I'm doing this. Here we go. As you recall, PEX.lua, which is from the PEX tools kit, is also in the root directory. And we load that first. And then we simply create an emitter by saying pex load rg, 
Uh, we pass in nil. We could make this a display group if we wanted to. We could do this. And then we'll pass in group. We could have called that anything. And we're going to place it in the center of the screen, just as we did in this example. And then we simply pass in the name of the emitter, and the last argument here is an empty table, which is, it's possible to pass in additional parameters to the emitter and to change all of its properties, including duration, number of particles. Uh, we can give an alternate location for the particle uh, file itself, that is the image, or we can use an alternative particle image. But in this example, I just want to show you that in just a few lines of code, you can do the same thing. So let's go ahead and save that. And assuming that I haven't typoed anything, I'm going to go ahead and prove that this is in fact the same thing by opening the project again. I will try to open the project again. Windows is fighting me. Let's go ahead and do this. And open the project. Paste that in there again, and open it again, and same thing. So I can just keep reloading this, reloading this, and in fact it works. So this is my preference, obviously, since I wrote the tools, but uh, I want to encourage you to try to use the PEX tool as much as possible because you can save yourself a lot of time as far as code writing and then it gives you flexibility with regards to the other bits, which is the settings and using different images, etc. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope that you get a lot of use and uh, mileage out of these tools. If you have any comments, go ahead and feel free to write them in the video description if you need any features, etc., etc. All right, thanks a lot. Bye bye.